Good morning and welcome. Today is the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Monsignor Tracy. Please stand for our entrance hymn. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the hope of which and thank you for tuning in to our Mass for the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now the inheritance of Jerusalem and the people of Judah, Judah judged between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done? Why then I look for the crops of grapes? Did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedges, give it to grazing, 
break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed. For justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there's any excellence, and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, things seem to be on course for, the, for this all-ahead advance into the autumn season. The school year is now underway. In a pandemic environment, strangely, uh, than before, the, the leaves are starting their annual exhibition of color And Christmas, despite the efforts of TV channels like QVC and HSN, is still being held off and seems somewhat distant. Everything is in full gear. In contrast, however, the church year has started downshifting to to its end of year. The readings are becoming darker and more sinister, striking sometimes as almost 
an almost a, 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 apoleptic tone as the focus turns to the end times and the four last things. The parables from Matthew from now until the middle of November are all originally situated when they were first uttered during Jesus' last week on earth, lending them worthy of close and attentive listening. Today's parable of the landowner and the tenants is set against a backdrop that would have been familiar to the audience that Jesus addressed it to in the first century. A wealthy landowner wanted his due. The tenants rebelled and got the audacious idea that they, if, if they eliminated the owner's son and his servants, they would be the winner's take all. They would be answerable to no one and could do whatever they pleased. I think it's easy to apply Jesus' parable to the state and faith leadership of the time, critiquing their lack of faithful stewardship. But like it or not, finger pointing of blame to another person is a self-righteous act and a distortion, perhaps, of the parable's message. Jesus wouldn't tolerate the actions from any of us any more than he would tolerate it from his contemporaries. So we must ask ourselves, I think, what is the lesson Jesus has for me in this parable, rather than just for those in authority? Sometimes that discovery takes the courage of careful listening. Suppose, for example, we listen to Isaiah's reading in the first reading in the Old Testament of the vineyard as a representation of God's vantage point on human life and the earth that we have been given. We hear of God's tenderness for creation, the loving watchfulness of God who looks over the evolution of growth, green transformation, and flowering. Then we hear of God's heartbreak. Wild gra grapes spring up where there should have been good ones. What if we suspended thinking the parable was about those people and instead saw it addressed to all of us as stewards of the earth. In 2015, Pope Francis wrote an encyclical called Laudato Si, which tried to do exactly that. But really, the encyclical did not take very deep root, it seems to me, in either our church or in society. It was Francis's, Pope Francis's second encyclical and took a beating from industrialized leaders and sort of fell by the wayside in a way. Another possibility of how this parable could apply to you and to me is to note that the parable is the story of tenants who had forgotten who they were. Rather than acting like collaborators with the landowners, they decided to be the big cheeses. They wanted to be the bosses, calling their own shots without interference from anyone above them. And when you stop and think about it, haven't we, we all been guilty of being big-headed, power-hungry, or perhaps feel privileged enough to step over people who get in our way. Such is a misguided perception of ourselves. 
despite the unique gifts and privilege God has given to each one of us, it's our responsibility to use them humbly and generously without seeking any kind of adulation or recompense. The scribes and the Pharisees recognized that Jesus was addressing them, and they didn't like it. But rather than risk a problematic debate in public, they plotted secretly against Jesus because they had a lot at risk. The gospel ends with these words, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who produce its fruit. That fruit, those fruits are the ones listed, I think, in Paul's second reading to the, to the, from the letter to the Philippians. Do what is true and right. Do what is honorable and worthy. Be gracious to others. Be just. And continue walking in the ways of God. If we can produce those kinds of fruits, if we can do the, them, then we will indeed be blessed. For Paul says we will sit with God's people in a worldwide vineyard and worship together our all good God forever and ever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit. He was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sakes, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith in our hearts that God generously provides for all his people, <clears throat> we pray now for our needs and the needs of our world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may always be a productive vineyard in the world producing an abundance of holiness, mercy, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have strayed from God and the church may heed the call of the Lord to rejoin the community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For government leaders, may they turn to God's spirit for guidance in dealing with the problems of our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for the sanctity of human life, from conception to natural death, and that all Catholics may acknowledge 
the primacy of the need to defend life when they exercise the right to vote. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For those who have been affected by devastation of recent hurricanes and wildfires, may they feel God's protection and comfort, and that as a parish community, we can pro provide some financial assistance along with our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Lois Schluth, B.B. Hammond, and Donna Wilson. May they be blessed with the assistance they need to endure their hardships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Robert Beck, may they rest forever in the joys of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you provide us with all that we need on our journey to you, the kingdom of heaven. Enable us to be grateful servants who show our gratitude through our generosity to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray these sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service. Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them too, we confess your name in exaltation 
giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great and have you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so, so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our, shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. So that bring to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly pray, may this same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of that great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the, taking the chalice that was filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we recall Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice. 
which you yourself have provided for your church. And grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and this one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and those who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a most, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May God free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love so that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and come, and come happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. battle.
be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you for viewing us, everyone, today. Have a great week. Thank you, Monsignor. Ah. Uh.